Hello everyone, in this video we're going to look at how we can create a variable sized pixel brush using Photoshop brush tools. So in Photoshop, I have it set now that I removed all the brushes and all these um, are the ones that are left, these six brushes. And the way that they vary is, so the top one is a soft brush, the, the other one next to it is a hard brush, which means that there's a lot le less gradation between the black and the white, or in this case, the black being the foreground color and the white being the paper, not the background color. Then we have a variable sized soft brush. So it varies with how much pressure I put, very little pressure, a lot of pressure. And then we have the same thing, except it's a hard brush. So very little pressure, a lot of pressure. Again, the edge is harsher, and then we have variable opacity. So the lighter I press the, the pen, the lighter or less paint, so to speak, I put. So very little pressure, almost no color, a lot of pressure. Same thing again with, um, with the hard edge. Hard edge tends to be a little uh, more visible. It doesn't seem to respond so well to lower pressures, and that's why usually I change the opacity to also use uh, fade or transfer. So what we have here, we have variable brushes, but we're using the brush tool. For pixel art, we should use the pencil tool. And the pencil tool can also use these brushes, except regardless of what you're doing, you'll only get, you'll always get um, hard brushes. So hard edge brush, because there's no gradation. You will get the variable size, that's true. Uh, same with uh, um, same with soft brush and hard brush, but you won't get the opacity from the soft and hard opacity brushes, right? So the only thing that you get off of pixel art uh, brush, so the pencil brush, is the variation in the width. So when you wanna paint something in pixel art, what usually what we do is we take one of these brushes, hard brush or soft brush, it really doesn't matter, and we bring it down to one size, right? So one pixel size, and that's it. That's pretty good for a pixel line. There's a few lines here that personally I would clean. Uh, so that is all is these sort of like double lines I actually still have the uh, pixel grid, which I really dislike. So all of this is basically creating single pixels. Now, if you drag along very slowly, you're gonna get all of these corner pixels because what's happening is the brush is going through this pixel and those two in the middle. So it's basically painting both. So whenever I do this, I'd rather draw fast and get less of the pixels um, on the corners, right? So that there's less recording of where my uh, brush tip has been. So there's very little cleanup to do. Of course, you can't always do that. So one trick I use is I just shift click, click once and then sh hold shift and keep clicking and by default, Photoshop will only create a one pixel width line. The problem with this line is that it'll be kind of choppy, you would kind of see where the line breaks, but you can get used to getting really good at figuring out what that is and then you can clean that up specifically, like for example here, probably it'd be better to have like that and then you can smooth your lines out a little bit better. So here, for example, but these are just examples, just me like being a bit more peculiar with a line. So what other brushes can we make? Well, we can do the variable uh, sized one. So we can take this brush, we can make it bigger, let's say four, and then we can go into the brush settings and say we wanna use shape dynamics and that means we're gonna use the pen pressure as the size jitter variation. So uh, pressing really hard and then letting go and we get almost no variation. Why is that? The reason is this brush, this brush tip that I picked is a really big brush tip and it's a round one. So no matter how small I make it, there'll always be forced anti-alias. So the solution really is to go in, make a one by one pixel selection, a very small selection, flood fill that in with black, and then go to edit, define brush preset. And that's gonna make a very simple brush tip. So I'm just gonna say one PX, it means pixel, and now I have a one pixel brush tip that I can pick off the bottom of my list. That's great for that. So if I go into my shape dynamics, uh, sorry, if I go into my brush tools and go into brush tip shape, if I make that four pixels big, I now have a four pixel big, uh, a four pixel sized pixel, so to speak. Uh, but then I can use my shape dynamics. And when I do, I can now press very lightly and get a one pixel thickness line and I can get a four pixel thickness. Uh, line as well. I think I might have tried making this a way bigger than just four. I think I just figured that a four to one is a good relationship because I can go like really light and then go really, um, really big. And this is great for like defining sh areas of shade or actually just creating some um, 
some like rim light, for example, in this case, but if I invert the image, you can kind of figure that out. Um, but I actually feel that the four is more comfortable. And what other things can you do? Well, there's one that I really like, which is the uh, dither brush, which is a very simple brush, which is just goes, let me just pick this one brush again. Actually, well, this was a mistake, but fine. So take one, uh, we'll just do a dither pattern here really quick. One, two, something like that. And then we select this bit, just the four by four. And then we go again, define brush preset, call this dithered tip. And then with this tip, we can take our brush tool, and that's our tip there. We can actually go around and use other to brush. But doing it this way is a little annoying because really there's no way to like drag along. But there's this option here, which is the spacing, which we can change. And I think this is gonna be around the, uh, I was gonna say around the 80%, but apparently it's not. So around the 100% of spacing, you can kind of see that it spaces out evenly, which means that you can do a bunch of lines as long as you line them up. Because once you start going over, that's when you get problems. Or when you start like scribbling randomly, that's when you get problems as well. But for small transitions, this is really, really helpful. And there's other brushes you can do just by creating your own tip. Uh, and you use that in a way that allows you to create some interesting textures. Uh, despite not having the ability to do some of the effects. You can take your brush, for example, here and clear one of those lines and that will give you an extra la layer of uh, dither gradation. Or you can do the opposite by adding uh, another line here to basically add another layer of, of, of gradation as well. Let's go back to this one. I forgot to save. So when you do this, when you change the spacing, let's say 100% was what I had, you then go back up here and you go new brush preset and you go dither, in this case brush. Right, this way the brush will be saved. It's this one and you can get rid of the tip because that one really isn't helpful. And you do that by holding Alt and then tapping on the, uh, on the brush that you want to get rid of. So in this case, for example, that would be a transition between white and, and uh, black. And then we can go and take that brush again, space it out once. And that's a very short, very short, but, uh, but it is, whoops, it is a uh, gradation. There you go, so a little gradient done with dither. Um, the other brush that I didn't save, so this pixel, just make it four pixel sized, and then activate the shape dynamics, and that's your uh, pixel sketcher, so to, so to speak. This is great because it gives you like uh, line dynamics where you can get like a, a shadow for something, and even though if it's not gonna be final, it's still going to be a good indicator of where you want to put your your uh, stronger uh, shadows later on. So in this case, for example, by just casting some shadows on forms, um, I can get the idea of of a face, I suppose, is is what I was going for here. And uh, and that was quicker to do because I have enough line width to to give me some extra information. On the uh, on the colors that I want, or the volumes that I want, or the sizes of the shadows uh, that I'm going to be working with. So I hope that helps. Uh, again, remember to new brush preset, pixel sketcher, and there you go. That's how you do your pixel art brushes with variable size and texture. Take care. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you some other time. Bye bye.